another day a privilege to come into his presence we do not take it for granted hallelujah Amen. what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve hallelujah Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Father, we give you praise. Awesome God, we bless your name. King in authority, we worship you. There is none like unto thee. There is none to compare like unto you. You are Jehovah, you are not a man, you are king, you are Lord. We bow before you, we worship the beauty of your holiness. Father, yet again, Lord, we say thank you for giving us the privilege to come into your very presence. Be thou exalted, Abba Father, in Jesus' most powerful name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So today we are going to be looking at what is entitled the power of testimonies. The power of testimonies. I want to read from Luke 38. Luke 8, sorry. 38 and 39. Bible says, now the man from whom the demons have departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. Tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus has done for him. Hallelujah. If we look at um, the dictionary meaning of testimony, it defines it as evidence, first-hand authentication of a fact, Testimony simply is an open acknowledgement of your experience. So here in this text, Jesus healed a madman. He had legions of demons resident inside of him. He wore no clothes. He was untamed. He actually lived in the tombs, in the grave. But after his encounter with Jesus, his story changed. He was no longer a man that was to be found in the grave. He was normal. And he was overwhelmed and he wanted to follow Jesus. But Jesus instead of allowing him to follow him, said, go back and tell. Go and tell the people what the Lord has done. How many times have we told people what God has done in our lives? Most times as children of God, especially when you have been a Christian for some years, you begin to take testimonies for granted. You don't see reasons to talk about the goodness of God. I believe that this morning the Lord wants to remind us 
that it is but wisdom that we tell the people about his goodness. A popular song says everywhere he went, he was doing good. It is wisdom that we talk to the people about the goodness of God. This morning, before I go into one or two things, I want to first of all highlight some salient truths about testimonies. Number one, testimonies are great tools of encouragement. Do you know that there might be someone around you that is going through a situation that you don't know? But just that testimony of yours can change it. Just that testimony of yours. Second Corinthians chapter number one, verse three and four. You find out that Apostle Paul was telling the people there, that they should comfort one another with what they have received from the Lord. You can say, Apostle, what are you talking about? That your life is a testimony. That food can be put on your table is a testimony. That you have a clothes to wear is a testimony. At times, it is only for wisdom that we make these little things reasons to thank God. You don't know who is by your side that has lost hope in one way or another. And you begin to thank God for little things. Before you know it, the person will begin to see the goodness of God even in their situation. I was reading something that was written. They said somebody was complaining that um, he didn't have, have a jet or something. And another person was thanking God for a bicycle. So he realized, I have a car, so I'm better than the person with a motorbike. And, and another person that was moving on the road was complaining he didn't have a car that he was trekking on the road. And somebody was by the side with only one leg thanking God that he's alive. So no matter the situation you find yourself, you're better than someone somewhere. And that is reason to thank the Lord. One thing I have come to realize about testimonies is that sharing your testimony with a heart of gratitude multiplies the testimony in your hands. And that is the reason why we should intentionally thank the Lord all the time. All right. The second thing is that testimonies begat testimonies. Yes, testimonies begat testimonies. Somebody gave a testimony. Telling people that she saw a hen, chicken, moving past with i think four or five little chicks and all of a sudden it dawned on her that she's better than an animal and and in that thought part she said that if god can give children to an animal that god can give her children and she was in shiloh grounds she went to where the chicken had passed and she took the dust there and she made tea for herself and drank. That was the last Shiloh she came as a barren woman. Mm. By the next time she will return to Shiloh, she came with triplets. Hallelujah. And she came and she testified. Now that was a personal encounter with a chicken. After she testified, another person in Shiloh said, how stupid have I been? Coming to Shiloh not knowing that the sand on the ground is beverage for childbirth. Mm. The woman just went outside and went to look for where they had a lot of children and mothers, you know, nursing mothers and all of that. 
she took her own sand and she prepared her own tea, drinking happily and singing. Children of God, she returned with a son to Shiloh. Testimonies begat testimony. That thing that God has done for you, there is someone somewhere expecting God to do it. Mm -hmm. Correct. And apart from that, when you testify, it begats the testimony of soul winning, which is where I'm driving at today. Your testimony is a weapon to win a soul for God. Do you know that one shared testimony can draw multitudes to Christ? Especially in these end times of miracle seekers. If you can testify of a personal encounter directly with Jesus, you will begin to give people hope that they themselves can go to God, talk to God, and keep pressing on God and something comes out of it. That's right. Mm -hmm. It is high time we begin to talk about the goodness of Jesus. It is high time we stop indulging people that do not talk about his goodness, that are building the faith of people negatively. Oh, children of God, yesterday I found myself making some very heartfelt prayers at night. Why? Because I came across a man of God that in those days was really a man of God, but I don't know what has gotten over the man right now. Yes, and, yes. And, and, yes. and he started saying that, that Abraham actually knew that Isaac was not going to die. That was why he went there with Isaac. He, I was amazed at what that man could say at his height of ministry. I knew indeed that the devil is attacking the testimony of Christ. One day we'll have good, respected preachers telling us that he didn't actually rise from the dead if we're not mm. careful. Mm. And that is why we need to go back to the weapon of testimony. Children of the Most High God, testimony is a weapon. We're looking at the silent truths about testimonies. The third one is that testimonies are reminders of the goodness of God. We all know after the Israelites has crossed Jordan, God instructed Joshua to have 12 priests take 12 stones, put it in the midst of Jordan and lay them on a plain ground for public glare. God requested this so that in times to come, their children and the generations after them will ask, why are these stones here? They will say these stones represent the goodness of God. They will tell them how the Lord parted Jordan for them to pass. You must not make little or of no effect any testimony that God has ever done in your life at any time. You must keep saying it to your children and their children so that they will know that the God you're introducing to them is a good God. Correct. This generation is a generation that is trying to tell our children that there is no God at all. So we have to be intentional about telling them that there is a God. I had a meeting with my children uh, early hours of the morning and I was making them realize that Everything about your mother has always been God. And I want to ask you people, with your mother today, do you think God failed? And they told me no. Wisdom. We must tell our children. We must always present God in good light to them. We must never, no matter the situation we find ourselves, ask God why in their presence. Yes. If we ask it in their presence, they take that. They say, okay, this God, at times we have to ask him why. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise God. 
testimonies defeat the enemy's plans and purposes. Testimonies. It defeats the enemy's plans and purposes. You know what? I told you that testimony is a weapon for warfare. Scripture said to us that we overcame him by two things. The blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Because testimony is a public acknowledgement and proclamation of God's goodness, it brings God fully into the picture. And when God comes fully into the picture, the enemies go out completely. Satan, the accuser of brethren, cannot handle any Christian who goes about proclaiming the goodness of God. He can handle the person. Because the more you proclaim his goodness, the more you are prone to praises. And when praises goes out, he comes himself. He doesn't send angels. The Bible said that he dwells in the praises of his people. Children of God, testimonies foretell the future. Yes, yes. hallelujah. Yes. Revelation 19. We saw in the second part of the, the, the tenth verse that the Bible says, For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm. By considering what God has done in the past, one can accurately predict what he will do in the future. He is the same God yesterday. Today and forever. You say because he did this before. He can do this again. Hallelujah. When, when David came to Saul. What did he do? He told Saul the good things God has done for him. In the desert. But then he had not killed Goliath. He said I killed the lion. I killed the bear. So Goliath should be one of those things. Question. Did he kill Goliath or nothing? He prophesied that he was going to kill Goliath. In fact, he was so specific. At a point, he told Goliath, you know what? In this process of your killing, I'll cut your head off with your sword. And that was what he did. Because when he said, I'll cut your head off, he was saying it without a sword in his hand. He only had a sling and stones. And with sling and stones, you don't cut anything anywhere. But by the time he was done, did he not cut the head of Goliath off? Successfully, he beheaded Goliath. So he was able to predict accurately the outcome of the fight between himself and Goliath. Why? Because of the testimony of the previous things God has done with him. We must not take this particular subject lightly. In the view of this, I ask the question, how powerful is testimony? Since I've got testimony, we put, how powerful is it? Children of God, testimony is so powerful that according to God's word, you only need two things to overcome the devil. Only two things. Revelation 10, Revelation 12, 10 and 11. And we overcame him by what? Number one, the blood of the lamb. Number two, the words of their testimony. Two things, two things. So briefly here, I'm going to look at, you know, how God overcomes people with this. Why? Because I know that God wants to start a new chapter. A chapter that will only begin to bear testimonies in the lives of every member of Christ-based Christian Center worldwide. Because many of us are going to become encouraged and we will do more. Because your testimony even in your workplace is a weapon for evangelism. Your testimony in that visitation that someone came to visit at home is a weapon for evangelism. Children of God, 
We have to understand the nature of testimonies. The nature of testimonies. In the nature of testimony number one, you can hear it. Remember Joshua chapter number nine. If you read through from seven to thirteen. The Levites said to Joshua, We have heard about the fame of your God. Of your God. We have heard all that he did in Egypt. They said, that's why we have come. So because of the fame of your God, people will come to become part of what you're doing. Child of God, you can hear testimonies. You can hear testimonies. In fact, there are some testimonies you hear just on hearing it, it takes your faith to another level. Remember, remember. <laughs> faith comes by what? Hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And that is the reason why I usually encourage whenever in fellowship, if there's a testimony that nobody is coming up, we'll remember a testimony that has happened before and we'll share it again. Yeah. We'll share it. Because when we keep sharing it, we keep opening avenue for more testimonies to happen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When you hear a testimony, it will increase your faith. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing. The second thing in the nature of testimony is that one thing you should do about a testimony is that you should share it. Whether it be your testimony or some other person's testimony, share it. You can tell others what you heard. Yes. Correct. Second Kings 5, 1 to 3. It was the house made of Naaman that shared the testimony of what was going on in her land. And that was what brought the miracle of Naaman. If Naaman didn't have that house help, I doubt if he would have been healed of leprosy. The house girl said, there is a man. And that was it. Hallelujah. That testimony you share, you do not know the impact, you do not know the effect on someone. So share it. Don't let it end with you. Let the flow continue. Praise God. The third thing you can do about testimony is that you can repeat it. Hallelujah. You hear it. You share it with someone and then that someone pick it up and repeat it. You repeat it. That same example of 2 Kings 5, 4. When the girl shared the testimony of what God was doing in her land, somebody heard it and repeated it to Naaman. Let's see 2 Kings, 2 Kings 5. 2 Kings 5, 2 Kings 5, verse 4. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Toss and toss, said the maid that is of the house of Israel. Amen. If you read from one, he said, Now Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable. Because of him, the Lord has given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said to her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. It wasn't the maid that said it to Naaman. In verse 4, the Bible says, And one went in, somebody, somebody. 
a random person. It mustn't be the pastor sharing the testimony. It mustn't be the deacon repeating the testimony. It mustn't be the women leader repeating the testimony. Neither is it supposed to be the elder repeating the testimony. Anyone. Bible said, and one went in and told his Lord, say, repeat the testimony. Praise God. He repeated it to the man. The fourth thing you can do concerning a testimony is that you can encounter you can encounter concerning testimony that is what when you can have it hallelujah when you have an encounter concerning a testimony that is when you can have it you can be the one that has a testimony. <laughs> Mark chapter number one. If you read 40 to 45, Jesus cured the leper and told the leper, don't tell anyone. <laughs> but you know what? The leper said, I have a testimony. How can I keep quiet? There are people they believe in their lives that they've never had a testimony before. So they are always quiet when the matters of testimonies are happening. They are always quiet. Now let me share a secret with you. If you determine never to be quiet concerning a testimony before you know it, a testimony comes your way. Many years ago, I was believing the Lord for something. And in church, what we do every day, every Sunday, is that when people testify, they dance out in front of the church with their well-wishers, their family people, and they come for a testimony offering. Every Sunday, when they are going out for testimony offering, I will join them and go out. They were not my relatives. In fact, some of them, I don't even know them. I don't talk to them. I just go out and I dance with them and I rejoice with them. And when it's time to drop the offering, I dropped an offering. I did this roughly one year. Guess what? At the entrance of the next year, it looked as if everywhere in my heaven burst open. Everywhere. Everywhere I looked, there was a favor waiting. Everywhere I turned to, there was a favor waiting. Doors I never imagined opening, they all started opening up. Why? I had danced to different types of testimonies. The ones I understood, the ones I don't understand. And I'll tell you why I put it that way. Because some of them, they come and they speak in a language I don't even understand. But I see people shout, hey, they will raise up their hand, they will wave. I say, okay, this must be a danceable testimony. I raise up my hand too, and I wave. And when it's time to go out, I go with them. I don't even know what they were thanking God for. But different aspects and areas of my life started falling in place. I began to understand what the Bible talks about. The lines for you are falling in pleasant places. And indeed, you have a goodly heritage. We need to have a rethink and a re-approach towards testimonies. It mustn't be when we hear one heavy thing that happened somewhere. No. The little things are also testimonies. Another thing that could happen. Talking about testimony is that it can be lost. Testimony can be lost. Remember, we are talking about the nature of testimonies. Someone can have a testimony and for one reason or another, he or she loses it. 2 Kings 4, 18 to 20. Scripture that talks about the great Shunammite woman who invited the man of God to her house for food and later built him a place to stay. And then the man of God decreed that you will have a son. And then she got a son. And then one day, after the son had grown, children of God, her testimony died. 
She had a testimony and she lost it. I pray for all of us in the house. We will not lose our testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm using this illustration for you to know that testimonies can be lost. That your testimony is lost does not mean you should begin to accuse God. Oh, I met somebody that once said to me, if the Lord doesn't do this, I will stop serving him. What? Whether the Lord does it or not, he still remains God. Amen. But the good news is this, which is the sixteen about the testimony, is that it can be recovered. Amen. Lost testimonies can be recovered. <laughs> no wonder in the book of Joel, chapter number two, he said the year is that the palm of worms has eaten. I will restore. He's a restoring God. No wonder in the case of Job, he said, and the Lord turned. Hallelujah. After losing your testimony, children of God, it can be recovered. In the same second Kings, for between 18 and 37, the Shunammite woman recovered her testimony. I pray for us yet again. Every testimony that we have lost, we shall recover it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to let you know that at times it is even better not to have a testimony than to have it and lose it. But in case you lose it, you have to be intentional about recovering it. The woman didn't cry and give the devil what she wanted. What did the woman do? The woman took the son and went back to the place he started from. He went to that room. He laid the son and he started going to the prophet. Even when they ask the woman, I hope all is well, he said, all is well. When you have lost your testimony, you have to be intentional about your confession. A lot of people has helped the devil bring their downfall quickly. Your confession matters. Your confession matters. It matters. Because your testimony is a weapon and it is what you say that your testimony is. In fact, there's a scripture that says, what you say to my ears, that is what I'm going to do. Another scripture says, you cannot call back the angel and say, I made a mistake, I was just jesting. No. If you are too tired about the situation, you don't know what to say, just be saying it is well. Or it will end in praise. Those two phrases are very important for a Christian. It is well. It will end in praise. You come into a situation that is not your expectation. You say it will end in praise. You come into a situation that you are becoming confused. You say it is well. Hallelujah. Never you keep quiet. Never keep quiet. I pray for you. Everything you have lost shall be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But the most beautiful aspect of testimony is to be the producer of it. <laughs> you can be the one producing testimonies in the life of others. I'll show you. Second Kings chapter number 5, 9 to 14. You will find out that when finally Naaman came to the house of Elisha, 
Elisha just sent a word. And by the next time we heard, Naaman was completely healed. Amen. How can you become a producer of testimonies? Child of God, you need to ensure that your relationship with Jesus is in tune. And you will need to desire that the testimonies you want to produce, the motive is to draw souls to the kingdom of God, not to show off. I, the Lord, I tried the heart. I sat the reins. The Lord is interested in your thought. He's interested in your motive. Why do you desire a testimony? Or why do you want to be a producer of testimony? Why? Maybe that request has not been answered because of the motive, motive behind the request. That thing you're looking for, why are you looking for it? I realized this many years ago and I rerouted. I started doing everything or wanting everything for kingdom advancement. I find out that before I desire it, it happens. So we should check here. What is the motive? What is inside the heart? Bible said that the heart of man is wicked. It's deceitful. Who can know it? But I pray for everyone today in this service. You will have a fresh testimony in the name of Jesus. The ones you have already, you will not lose them in the name of Jesus. The ones you've lost, you will recover them in the name of Jesus. From this time forward, you will begin to produce testimony. You will begin to produce testimony. Testimonies are in categories. Some of them is the one that comes after a, a miracle. They run out to share. John 9, 1 to 25, Jesus healed the man that was born blind. And some people were arguing whether Jesus is the one who did it or not. Then finally the man said to them, give glory to God. The man you say healed you. They, 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 they said, give glory to God. The man you said that healed you is a sinner. And what did the testifier say? Whether he is a sinner or not, one thing I know. Once I was blind, now I can see. These are the types that come after a miracle. But a higher testimony is the one you testify before the miracle. Hallelujah. Because the testimony after a miracle is the lowest category of testimony. The higher one is the one you testify before the miracle. Second Kings 4, 18 to 23. When the son of the Shunammite woman died, she took that child, he laid him on the bed of the man of God, went to the husband and said, please, sir, I need transportation. I want to go to that man of God. And the husband said, why are you going to the man of God? It's not the end of the month now. So you can't even say you're going to pay your tithes or to give an offering. It is not a particular celebration. So why do you want to go and give a present to the man of God? Where are you going? <laughs> you know what the woman said? All will be well. <laughs> All will be well. If there's anybody here that is believing God for a testimony, I want your confession to change. 
begin to testify before the testimony. When Jesus was faced with the crowd to feed, what Jesus prayed in his prayer is, I thank you because you hear me always. Amen. He didn't begin a deliverance session on the bread and fishes. He didn't begin to command all sorts on the bread and fishes. That's why I told you that your testimony is a weapon. There is a way you testify it, you'll be amazed. Something is going wrong. You don't even know how to go about it. It is only but wisdom to begin to say, my tomorrow will be all right. It will end in praise. It is well. My evidence has already arrived. Testify before it happens. Hallelujah. When you go to that same 2 Kings 4, 25 to 26, <laughs> you find another higher category than the category of testifying before the testimony. When did Shunammite woman go to the man of God and the man of God asked her, how is your husband and your child? She said, all is well. Remember what he told the husband? All will be well. Now he told the man of God, all is well. Not all will be well. <laughs> I don't know how many people that have this type of boldness in Christ. Hallelujah. A boldness to say my turn around has already started when you don't even know what the fate will be. She was no longer saying all will be well. She was now saying all is well. The Bible says something in Joel chapter number 3 and verse 10. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am weak. In Numbers 14, 26 to, to 28, the Almighty God said, as you have spoken into my ears, so I will do to you. What are you speaking? What are you speaking over your home? What are you speaking over your ministry? What are you speaking over your children? What are you speaking over your finances? Ah, but let the It is well with us already. Our turnaround already has started. <laughs> Whether the devil likes it or not, our tomorrow is well. In spite of what the enemies are saying, in spite of our challenges, all is well already. We see Matthew chapter number 18 and verse 19. The Bible says there, again I say unto you, that if the two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father in heaven. What does this mean? If two of you can produce a testimony, all you need to do is agree. The place of agreement in reproduction of testimonies cannot be overemphasized. So, especially for couples, I keep telling them that the platform of marriage is for us to begin to recreate. Procreation is not just in having children. No, you, you know, Christ is a creator. We are gods. We are also creators. But if you look at in the creation and all the things that happened, it came to a point that you will find out that he was in a meeting with some people and there was an agreement. I want to believe his trinity. And he said to them, let us make man. Whenever an agreement is in place, things happen sweatlessly. Things happen with ease. That is why also, if it is a church, there needs to be an agreement, the place of unity. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. That is the secret of manifestation of any form of testimony. You can, you can decide that every 
Sunday, day, a testimony will arise from our meetings. Why? Because there is unity. There is an agreement in the inner caucus. The, the, the powerhouse is in agreement. And they are praying that this is what we decree. This is what we have decided. And you find out that these things will just begin to, repro to reproduce itself, multiply itself, and, and people will be wondering, these people indeed are miracle workers. Before I conclude on this message, there is something I want to bring to your limelight. Just as faith comes by hearing, I want you to also know that fear comes by yes. hearing. Yes, sir. That is why you have to be very careful of who you listen to. And what you hear. Romans 10 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. What have you heard? Hallelujah. If you go to the book of Joshua, chapter number 2, from 1 to 11, Rahab said to the two spies, We have heard about your God and how our hearts have melted. Just as faith comes by hearing, fear also comes by hearing. I say it again. Be careful what you listen to. The Bible says in Revelation 2, 7, He that has ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Not what the devil is saying to the churches. John 8, 44, the devil is a liar. If you listen to him, you will hear his lies and fear will come. You have to intentionally shut your ears to the lies of the devil. I keep telling anybody that care to listen, anything at all that the devil has to say to you is a lie. Even if you're looking at at this bottle of water and you can see it's a transparent bottle and the devil is telling you that this bottle is transparent automatically it becomes a lie if you look well you will see that the bottle has a color he went to eve he said to eve if you eat of this fruit you will be like god you will do this you will do that he came to jesus he started quoting scripture and everything he was quoting is not as if it was it was there. But he was actually lying. So the lies of the devil, especially in the times we are living in, has been digitalized. Except you are discerning and sensitive in the spirit, you will not know when these lies are beginning to filter into you. We have to be careful. We have to be intentional. And we have to ensure that our prayer fire does not go down. That is why we need to prayer cover ourselves. Prayer cover our homes. Prayer cover our children. Prayer cover our ministries. Because there are some things that when they bring it, they are facts. They will tell you, in fact, the way they will say these things, if you are not careful, you will believe. No wonder why, why the Bible says, except these days be shortened, even the very elect will be deceived. I pray that this will not be our portion in Jesus' name. I pray that we will understand. Yes, our topic is the power of testimonies. But I pray that you understand that the aim of this testimony and the power behind this testimony is that we testify why for the reason of drawing souls to the kingdom of God. In this season, let us make all of our motives to be souls, souls, souls. Life itself is a battlefield. And this battle line that is drawn is the battle for souls. The Lord wants souls. The devil wants souls. So our testimony, remember, we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Our testimony is aimed at taking out souls from the kingdom of darkness and bringing them to the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Yes, 
testimonies are the good things God has done. You are offering them good things and everything. Fine, but that is not the major aim. Our major aim is that souls will be one to the kingdom of God. This afternoon I pray for us. That the passion for souls will be reason for our want of testimonies. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us. Let us not be swayed by the happenings of this time. Let us be part of the remnants that will continually have our eyes stayed on you. Give us the wisdom of soul winning through testimonies. Give us the grace to always be willing to share our testimonies. Father, we thank you for such a privilege. Thank you for the grace to come into your presence. Be thou exalted, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' most powerful name, I have prayed. Amen, 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 and amen. Shalom.